so I started off making the web shooter from the electromagnet and for that I have used copper wire from this old broken coil which has a diameter of 0.5 mm or you can say it's 24 AWG. For the barrel I have used Matador 18 ballpoint pen. To scrape the color off, I applied face wash that contains alcohol then I rubbed off until it looked almost clean. I removed the screw thing as well as the ink chamber then I set the slide caliber to 42 mm and marked all around the pen from the back. Here I have to set to 77 mm and marked all around the pen from the back again. The space for the coil was around 35mm. I removed the cap and cut the front side of the pen right from here. After doing that it looked like this. So I used a sanding block to fix the roughness. Before winding the wire I used a low grade drum sander to make the surface of the barrel rough. Since the first layer is the hardest to wind, sanding will help the super glue to bond evenly. I applied a little bit of super glue where I marked and held the wire like this for a few seconds and then simply started winding. After a few turns I used super glue again to keep the loops together. If you are salvaging wire from an old copper coil and when you are undoing the wire it looks something like this, you can always use a close your index finger and thumb to grab it like this and keep tugging the wire until it looks kinda like this. I kept winding the wire until I reached where I marked. Then I applied some more super glue so the wire doesn't come off. It was easier to start and kept winding the second layer since the previous layer made wedges for the wire to sit in, which was helpful to keep the loops in place and I didn't really have to use that much glue. Following these steps I kept winding the wire until I have reached the layer 16th. Then I applied some more super glue to secure the overall coil that is 35mm long and 30mm wide. The capacitors that I needed are inside of this 400 watt power supply which needs 220 volts to function properly. If you don't have any PC power supply, you can just order the inexpensive capacitors from eBay or Amazon for about 10 to 12 bucks. After unscrewing and opening the power supply, I found the capacitors that are rated for 200 volts and 470 UF. Then I unscrewed the board from the casing, unplugged as well as cut the wires and the PCB board just came right off. Then I used a 60 watt soldering iron to hit the capacitors legs in order to get them out of the board. In parallel, these capacitors have a total capacitance of 940 UF and 200 volts. Then I needed a transformer in order to get the capacitors charged to its full potential. You can easily get a transformer like this on eBay or Amazon, but I got mine from a circuit board which belongs to a microwave oven. The transformer was soldered on the board sort of like this. The transformer had 8 terminals, but only 5 of them are for actual uses. I removed the terminals that weren't connected to any of the coils, or else it might have gone confusing. The transformer is designed in the specific wire arrangement. I chose this side to be the primary and this side to be the secondary due to the wire winding ratio. I didn't test it, but the transformer should output 10 volt AC provided the input is 120 volt AC. According to these values, the primary to secondary turn ratio is around 12. If I flip the conditions of the primary and the secondary, instead of 12 times reduction, I will get 12 times more voltage. But I needed an oscillation in order to drive the transformer from a battery, and for that I have used this 5 volt single pole double throw relay. I know relays aren't meant to be used as oscillators, but it's not going to be fully functional after a few minutes. Since I used two 9 volt batteries which is equivalent to 18 volts in series. The SPDT relay has 5 terminals. These two are for the coil or the electromagnet. This one is the middle contact. This one is the normally closed contact. And this one is the normally open contact. The circuit symbol of the SPDT relay looks something like this. If I connect the terminals like this, an oscillation can be formed across the coil or the inductor or the electromagnet which is helpful to get higher voltage from the transformer if I connect the wires to the primary coil, but it won't provide any DC current on the secondary unless I use a rectifier. A voltage rectifier is a simple device made out of four shocky diodes that converts AC into DC allowing a current to flow in one direction. I found the diodes that I needed on this TV circuit board. So I disordered the diodes and soldered those again in this specific arrangement. The red wires are for the AC current or you can say it's for the input. So later I soldered the red wires to the transformer secondary coil which is the output. The black and red wires are for the cathode and anode which I later soldered to the capacitors. But to charge and shoot the projectile I need switches. I just used these two switches that I found in the microwave oven. I just glued them together and soldered wires for each Terminal. Now let me explain how the web shooter circuit works. These are the switches, the capacitors, the relay, the transformer, the rectifier and the coil. When I flip the charge switch, the relay makes an oscillation which drives the step up transformer and since the battery is 18 volts, the transformer will produce around 216 volts since the secondary to primary turn ratio is around 12. 
but the transformer's output can't charge the capacitor so the rectifier converts it into DC and the rectified current will charge the capacitors to 200 volts. After that when I flip the trigger switch, the coil turns into an electromagnet for a short period of time, which helps the ferromagnetic projectile to gain acceleration and speed to get out of the barrel like a bullet. I send it the relay, the coil's barrel and these two sides of the transformer. Then I glued the relay as well as the barrel to the transformer. I used some hot glue to fill the empty spaces. These are the 13 cm scale pieces that I used as the main body. I just bend it with the ply to give it a wristband look which fits on my wrist. Then I used some more super glue and thread to make them stick together as well as the coil transformer and relay part. Then I also attached the capacitors in the same way. After that I connected the capacitor terminals in parallel so it's 940 UF and 200 volts. I connected one of the coils wire to the capacitors and then added the switches and connected one of the switch wires to the capacitors and the coil. I soldered the rectifier's AC side on the transformer secondary. I did not want to short anything so I covered the rectifier with some tape. I used these two 9 volt battery clips and connected them in series so I can get 18 volts. Then I connected everything according to the circuit I showed you earlier, connected the batteries, hot glued everything and went back to sleep. The next day, I noticed something wasn't working right, so I soldered another relay in the same way to make sure it was the relay's fault. As I mentioned before, relays aren't designed for these kind of uses. Therefore, I'm using 18 volts to use a 5 volt relay. The projectile. Just a simple ferromagnetic iron core with a soldered needle on the front and a loop took on the back of it. The main whip cartridge is just made out of these four components. This part stores the thread, this part makes everything stick together, and that's the part which helps the thread to come out easily as well as it connects with the barrel. Then I got another problem. The coil's barrel gets narrower at the end so the projectile couldn't pass through it. So I just had to make the barrel shorter to solve the problem. Then I tested the web shooter if everything was alright. Shortly after the test, the relay wasn't working right again. So I just used these female connectors and hot glue to make a mold, so I can change the relay whenever I want. After that, I connected the wires as I should, and the web shooter was finally complete. Everything that is used in this video, from the circuit components to the tools to the gears, is linked in the video description. But if I make another web shooter, I'll make sure it loads faster.